the conversation that we, we, we are going to discuss is the business of the music industry, right? Because there's a whole value chain within the music industry. It's not just at retail level. There are so many components that um, feature within uh, this music industry. So essentially, what we then did, because there are different components within the music industry, we brought in people within the value chain. So on my right, I've got Uma Mushoba, who's from the Department of Arts and Culture. She will be speaking about what support systems does the government uh, offer to musicians, what are the processes of applying for these grants, and so on and so forth. And then next to, next to Obama, we've got to put Kyle. Uh, Kyle is from EPSA. Um, so one thing that, within our research, one thing that we discovered is that um, artists sometimes make a lot of money in the summer, right? And they make a lot of money through bookings. However, they are unable to then financially plan yeah, for, 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 for their year or for their future. So we've got Rupert Kyle, he'll be telling us about the wealth creation and um, other game of policies that EPSA offers um, that could yeah, then allow artists to create some form of sustainability within their art. We've got Mrs. Palisa. Mrs. Palisa is from Usambra. Uh, Usambra is a royalties organization company that collects royalties on behalf of artists and then again, I, I did no introduction for who puts it. I'm sure you already know who puts it. So should I give an introduction? Yes. I, I think I'll allow okay, um, the various panelists to give the, to give an introduction of themselves uh, so that you can hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Uh, good evening. I am Mrs. Shoba as he's indicated. I'm happy to be with you today, especially with my favorite artist, Suzex. <laughs> he reminds me of Michael Jackson. <laughs> he dances. So I'm happy to be here. It makes me feel young because I'm the oldest in here. Uh, I am from the Arts and Culture Department in the municipality, not the provincial one. So, Arts and Culture, Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality. Thank you. Hi, afternoon guys. So, my name is Carl. I'm a financial advisor at Ads Bank. So, basically in a nutshell, the things that we handle for, for our clients is, is basically split into two aspects. So, one is uh, creating wealth, and the other one is looking after that wealth. So. Like, like um, has been mentioned, we create that money, we don't know what to do with that money. So all I want to do today is basically give some guidance, um, just give some suggestions. Obviously there's no one, one true size fits all here, so there's going to be a lot of different people doing a lot of different things. But I mean, we can chat, ask your questions please, and yeah, just look forward to, to helping you guys give me some guidance with that. Perfect, thank you. Hi guys, how are you doing? Hi. Um, as we put it, my name is Balisa. I'm from uh, Joburg. Our office is based in Joburg in Brampton. Um, I'm representing Isampra. Isampra is a collective management organization that uh, distributes or collect uh, royalties on behalf of record companies and I'm an artist. So our purpose and the reason for me being here is to share with you um, the importance of artists knowing about the royalty uh, business and how they can get that money into their pockets. Basically, um, artists need to, to know that you just cannot be an artist or a record company owner and not know about royalties and different types of royalties and how to get to those royalties into your pockets. So I'm here to share information with you. You can ask as much question as you want. Uh, we are here to assist. Someone uh, I so Ningi My name, I'm born Zakele Madida, but I'm known as Zakes Bandwing. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, record company owner. I, I think I'm like a very, I'm a very unique kind of like, like um, uh, artist or place in terms of uh, the industry uh, because I've been in almost every, I've played almost every role within the, the value chain. So I've been, I've discovered an artist, Asandel Volvo, 
I had a record company. I negotiated with uh, with uh, with the companies on behalf of artists, which I then became a manager, then I became a producer, then I worked for a major recording label. So I, I kind of like like a 360. So I'm I'm very I'm very I think I'm very lucky and very unique to be on like front stage, know what is happening, you know, on stage, and as much as I know equally what is happening behind, you know. So thank you. So Mama, without wasting time. What support systems does um, the Department of Arts and Culture offer to the artists? Okay. Thank you for the question. First of all, I need to explain how the Arts and Culture Department works. There's a national government, provincial government, and local municipality. But in the local government sphere, there is no dedicated arts and culture department. If you look at other municipalities, you'll find the community services. And the community services includes everything, your parks, cemeteries, and a little bit of arts and culture. But fortunately for us in the Nelson Mandela Bay municipality, in 2005, the Arts and Culture Department was established as a standalone where we look at arts, culture, libraries, and heritage. In fact, heritage is included in culture. So we are in a better space in the Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality in that regard. However, our budget is not great. And looking at the um, region, it's very little to satisfy everybody because we are talking here of Port Elizabeth, Youth Make and Dispatch. And we are striving to be as inclusive as much as we can so that we reach out to the northern areas, we reach out to Motherwell, we reach out to Summer Strand, everybody in the region um, we want, we would like to, to assist. Now since 2015, we established a kitty, a little bit of money, which is 750,000. Very little, 750,000 is very little. But we try and distribute that to deserving artists through applications. We, in 2015, we had one 750 for the entire financial year. But since last year, we pleaded with the bosses that we would like to have that 750 dispatched twice in a financial year. So we, the applications closed recently. We are busy adjudicating those um, applications now, and then we will grant those deserving artists. Then from January, for the second part of the financial year, we will uh, announce again. We will, uh, you will must look out in all the free newspapers, your Herald, your Burger, and, and, and apply. But what we find is that most people do not know what they want. They don't know how to articulate their need on that proposal. But we try, nevertheless, we try by all means to, to, to look through it and, and find what people really want to do. Uh, woke is one of our recipients. We did give them a little bit of money in last year? No, no, no. This year. Yes, the cycle. So we are very proud to announce that people like them we have assisted and many others. So uh, do look out for the newspaper apply, but make sure that you are, you tell us 
what you have done with the money. Because it is so easy to find money in your bank account and suddenly there's Black Friday, you get tempted if you are three in the company, each one would like to have a, a pair of sneakers. So please guard against that. Stick uh, to your implementation plan, do what you want to do. And we do emphasize that you need to grow other people in the process. Don't be selfish as an artist. Try and bring up other artists as well to your level so that we have a, a, a better creative industry in the Nelson Mandela Bay municipality. Thank you. So, let's call Kitty Atitara. Yazu Mama, Mama Yan. Uh, we visited uh, last week in the office, right? We have a speaker of the past, we have a lot of But Emma, can you please just explain uh, uh, what supporting documents do you need to have when you apply for this um, specific grant? Right? And um, what, what enhances your chances of getting the lead grant so that people can get an understanding? But you know, you know, you know, you know, uh, do they need to have in this sort of application? Okay, thanks. We do encourage that people become business-like. Uh, I'm going to make an example. Go Zakes. My city go Zakes. Ufuna Ukwenza e workshop like this one. We encourage that Uzix becomes himself. We are trying to avoid the middle person. I know we artists, well-established artists like himself and others, maybe in the room, money managers. But for the smaller ones, like from the one Osuke mother, when Shambu Zengenya, Oshem, Uzo Tatale, Fom, Pagote, Bamasbara, to fill in. Well, that one, Magama, must try by all means to have his own business register with the municipality. You go to Harawa Road, there's a compliance office there, they will tell you what you need to have. Your ID, your SAR certificate, if you have been a, a, um, a business already. But it is important to be your own business so that you can own the little bit we give you. Ungai Kekezeli i manager because the manager would need a management fee. Whereas if you are you have established yourself as Unom music, I'm just making an example. Unom music, Upaya, compliance with her ID. <coughs> with the account as I fully absa or wherever it doesn't have to have money in our account but it must be on your name so that whatever you get comes to you we said in this you use the money as you wish and that is where we we encourage gengoki accountability so <clears throat> we do understand that we are all growing we are emerging artists we don't expect you to have uh, enormous amounts in your banking account, no. We don't even look at that, but we want to be sure that when we give you the money, it goes into the correct account. So, and then what is also very important is to develop, like the works of today. Today, a lot of people are going to benefit from their initiative. They haven't been selfish. Yes, they have paid for the venue, did that and that and that, but somebody today will go home wiser. So that is what we encourage. Do work with other people, enrich other people, but make sure the money you, you use uh, wisely and avoid a uh, a middleman at this stage of you being an emerging artist. Yes, you may when you go to Joburg one day um, 
have a, a manager and a what this and what that and what that. But for now, as you are growing, be yourself, grow and and, and, and work with other artists in the Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality. Thanks. The business of music. Young mom would have a business. So once every five car would have started a business. Then you get it, um, you need to deposit 500 rents from Pagua Absa, or, uh, but you prefer to get Gua Absa. Um, <laughs> prefer to get Gua Absa. Um, so, tell me, Musa, come on. Later, I'm going to apply to Lunyak. At this stage, no, because as I said, we want to reach out to as many artists as we can. So if we keep giving you money, there's an artist out there who is suffering. So we want to spread the word. And in the latest uh, advert we said, we sent out, we said, all those who benefited in the last two years should not apply. So skip two years and come back in the third year because we keep a list every year. We know all our beneficiaries from 2015. We know who we have given the little bit we have and we monitor that as well. So skip two years but also try other avenues. There are a lot of places where people can apply for money. So please do try and uh, look out for those adverts and apply elsewhere as well. Thanks. Yeah, but again, as a walk, we encourage a sustainability. Hope Zates has been around, and he's mentioned that he's been within um, quite a number of um, processes within this value chain. Putzex, could you please just break down um, how many people form part of the team and what roles do the different people within your team play? Or, or do you, are you registered as a company? Uh, in that sense. Can you please just touch on that? Please? Yes, of course. We are registered as a company. It's called My Inner Production. I think it's one Arguably, um, the um, the oldest record company uh, in KZN. I think we opened in 2005, and uh, and then and after that, soon after us, uh, and then uh, we had uh, a lot of record companies, you know, from KZN. Uh, uh, each will be Afro Ten, and I think it's the most popular one. But I think they they registered a year later than us. You know, we had already registered. Um, and uh, we, we, we obviously started uh, uh, recording artists, but right now uh, we uh, so we have offices both in Johannesburg and Devon. Uh, we have one person operating in Devon because we are running a studio there. Uh, and then in my team we have someone who's uh, lucky with the office who's doing um, uh, bookings, you know. Um, and then we have. Uh, Actually, we have another office. <laughs> so, we just opened another office in Internet in Amsterdam. So we we have Sarah, who's who's my manager, running that office in Amsterdam. And then there's a uh, Taylor, who's my tour manager. He, he's just around here. Uh, we have uh, KB, who's uh, the general manager for the company. And uh, we have uh, Sandy, so who is uh, as I'll say content guy, who's who's obviously just. You know, collecting everything uh, that needs to be collected, you know, um, put it aside and whatever it would like to communicate that month, you know. So, each uh, when I, when I want to be a, um, a ghetto king, so we'll go and look at the archives of everything that's speaking about the ghetto, whatever, and then we'll start feeling that on our, on our, on our socials because that, that's the message that we are communicating. So, anything else. Apart from that, they won't make it on our social media. Uh, so we know are ghetto kings, so we are between the townships. So more, most of even the content and the stuff that we talk about would be anything that attached to growing someone from the township with the messaging, the, you know, because we own that particular campaign. 
when we move to another campaign, then we'll try and make sure. But we just collect content as much as possible. It's collecting content even today. So as we are going to plan next year, what are we going to do then? We're going to look at the content that we have in terms of communicating that. Obviously, I said Ted is just a torment. Terminator. Terminator is someone that just talks with you and just making sure that everything else is being sorted, you know, before before you are seen as a diva or before you come into a venue and not ready. Because as artists, every time when you walk into a venue, you must be ready because someone is going to want to take a picture. And when you don't know where you're sitting, they might think like you have an attitude, being like, sorry, can I have everything in it? I just want to know where I'm going. And they're like, ah, what's it? You know? So you want to have someone who's just going to go in first, see where, you, where you're sitting, make sure that everything is fine. And then you walk in and you know exactly where you're going. Um, and then the, the booking agent, which is lucky, basically it's just about bookings. We are, so we have targets. Uh, I, I, we, have, we have a money person here, we all, obviously have targets. So we obviously have targets. So every month we want to reach a certain amount of money. That's, there's an amount of money that we want to reach. E.g., you, we perhaps gonna say we wanna have, we wanna make probably plus minus hundred thousand a month, right? And 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 we obviously gonna go out and look for those particular gigs now. If someone calls, you know, I know then I'm not I'm not cheap. So when someone calls and then we give them a quote and then voila, probably probably we make that hundred thousand in one gig. Then in that month, then we have surplus. You know, um, but even if we didn't get any 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 kick in that month, we can relax because we've, we've managed to reach that target. But let's flip it and say uh, we 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 did not get or you got any one kick and paid you about twenty thousand right? Then we will try and figure out how we're gonna be able to manage it with this forty thousand, this eighty thousand right? Believe you me, we do call, so we will call venues. We'll look at venues that perhaps called us that we're not available. We'll call those particular venues and be like, "Yo, we are available. Uh, we wanna we wanna come to your venue to have this day for us." Blah 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 blah. So we'll 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 re, we'll re some sort of like a negotiation, and so that we are re, we reach that that target. So that's how we run our business. So our booking agent about it does. It just makes sure that we 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 are able to reach our venue. So we're very we, we become very upset when we even reach our venues. And the first person, the first line of person, probably someone who, whom we want to scream to is a, is a booking agent that like, would say, Where are the bookings? Um, uh, 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 KB, I said, the general manager, he actually is everything. He will be working with Lucky, working with Taylor, working with myself, working with Taylor, just making sure that the company moves, the company gets artists, the company, the company, you know. Um, and our manager just manages every business that we are doing. So basically that's how our structure looks like.